right, so we're going to continue here. I'm in the upper garden, and there is a fairly large Acer palmatum right here that I had considered moving at one time, but the trunk is just too big and can't do it, so it will stay there. Uh, I have right there in the back with that swing, old swing thing, um, the swing frame, I have some black and bloom, and I have um, the lantana, and above it I have a a bat face cupia that the hummingbirds are supposed to like. All those are for the hummingbirds. So I'm swinging around here and as you can see all of this is daylight. And again you'll see that there are some late and very late blooming daylight. And there's a black and bloom salvia right here and another aster palmatum. And you swing around here the grass in my yard is, is the pits, but I don't care. I'm not worried about grass. Rabbits like it, and I'm more concerned about my plants and so forth. I don't use um, fertilizer and whatnot on grass, and it's I don't use chemicals to kill things except when it's really, really bad. Um, I might use it for poison ivy if something is out of control. did that for my neighbor. Um, he had it along the fence, but in here most of the daylilies are already finished and I'm looking down into the side yard now and and as you can see there there is some color but nothing like in July. July is when we have peak bloom for the daylilies here, the, the mid-season daylilies. Uh, coming along here there, there's one that's called um, Fast Friends. It has a couple blooms coming and I also have another Porter weed right there. It's on a smaller side. Needs, it'll be growing some more. It's a purple one. And right here is a daylily by Dale Thomas. This is Elizabeth's um, Paradise. Real pretty one. Dale Thomas is a friend of mine who hybridized late and very late daylilies for a long time. He no longer does that. But I have his a lot of his day lilies, not nearly as, as many as what he has registered, but I have quite a few. And I have some seedlings that I got when he uh, stopped hybridizing. And Betty Kinney, who's a, another day lily friend that's not too far from me, she grew them and bought a lot of his seedlings. And, and this is the upper uh, garden. Not too many day lilies are blooming right now. I'm going to swing around here and you see the Aster palmatum. It's pretty big, it's pretty old. They get huge. And then there's some um, black and bloom and flowering tobacco and rutabecchia and hot lips. And in the back there I have the zinnias that I grew from seed. Swinging around here I have a round garden, mostly with daylilies that I really should uh, move some of the ones in the back because they're too shaded to another garden. And just swinging around here, we're going to go over to and see an area where we have ivy, which, you know, like, I can't take care of all of this land, so I have a lot of it in ground cover. And I have pineapple sage right here and honey melon sage. I also have verbena and lantana. And... I have the zinnias and the pineapple sage in front and I'm trying to support them so I have stakes and so forth and the hummingbirds really like the, the uh, zinnias and I'm, I'm very pleased because I didn't think I'd have any this year. It took a long time to get them established. I have one tomato plant back there, a, an heirloom tomato and I have a pile of mulch and so forth here that will basically when my daylilies are finished I'll cut these back, weed it out because I have a lot of creeping Charlie and violets in here, wild violets. And as you can see, there's a lot of buds right here on this daylily. And this is called My Friend Liz. And it's a very late blooming daylily that I hybridize from Sandra Elizabeth and L Little Lusty Lulu. And it's, it's registered and it was registered for a friend of mine who passed away. And there is another one that I'm considering registering. It's not that great of a flower. It's pretty, but what you do see is the scape that has 
a lot of buds on it and that is really something to consider when you're going to register a day lily. And swilling along here we have Blue Fortune which is Augustashi and more late blooming day lilies and here is one that's called um, Mocan Augustar I believe that's it and right here is Dancing with Sandra it really just started a few days ago and swinging around here see another one Olali Delight it's from a nursery in Vermont and that one didn't start yet but it will soon and swinging around even further you'll see Bermuda Coral which is a beautiful coral color daily it's an old one but boy is it pretty and it's tall and I like it a lot and that's from Dawn Marvin and this is Flasher I think I have one more bloom on Flasher it's an orange one and in there is Laura Harwood really like that one and there's Kupia in front of that and there's an Augustashi I believe and some more of my uh, bird baths and this is a bird bath area so swinging around here I have some uh, Mexican sunflower and this is where I have the um, black and bloom and if we'll just bear with me a minute I wanted to see if you can even this is supposed to look like, like a bat face and that, I think it does it's a little out of focus so I'm sorry about that but I'm going to turn it off for now.